I hope that uh, everyone uh, seizes the opportunity to watch this documentary. I, I think for young people in athletics, uh, it, 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 it will set a tone for you. Perhaps maybe uh, uh, give some information that you might not have had before. I think older people who don't understand or don't know of or have not experienced the, uh, uh, the work that historically black institutions perform in the life of its students, student athletes. Uh, I hope that you'll be able to, uh, to learn from the experiences of an Eldridge Dickey, whom I believe stands near the top of uh, all of the student athletes that we've had here at Tennessee State University. I hope you see the need and encourage others to watch this documentary because I believe that for all of us, it can be informative. I can recall years ago one time when Eldridge Dickey was with us, outstanding quarterback for us. Uh, Eldridge would come to this field and uh, at game time, uh, our stadium would hold about 18,000, and at game time, there would be 30,000 in here. Breaking every fire code that you want to think about, uh, but that's the way they came, and they came from all over the country here to see that young man, Eldridge Dickey, a play. Many people believe that Eldridge Dickey's football career started at Booker T. Washington High School. But that is not the case. He actually started playing football at Lockett Junior High School. After leaving Lockett, he attended Booker T. Washington. That's where he earned the title Eldridge the Kid Dickey. He was known for his strong arms, accurate passes with either hand and quick feet. He was also known as an unselfish player that would hand the ball off to a running back just as quick as he would throw or run it himself. Fran Tarkenton, who was known as the scrambler, loved Dickey's ability to pass and run. He was also the keynote speaker when Dickey was awarded Sportsman of the Year Award for the fourth and final time while attending Tennessee State University. Dickey received numerous awards over the years. He was also voted in the Hall of Fame at Tennessee State University. During Dickey's high school, collegiate, and NFL career, he competed with and against the best of his era. To the surprise of many, he defeated them all. Dickey had the best overall stats of any quarterback in preseason during his rookie year in the NFL. He consistently and impressively showed up as a passer, runner, and receiver. Dazzling crowds every time he stepped on the football field. Dickey in his own unique and dignified way truly tried to set an example for young black quarterbacks coming behind him. He always took the high road. He wanted us to be proud of him and he wanted us to know that he was a peaceful warrior. As he put it, I must bear the cross before I wear the crown. Unfortunately for Dickie, he bore the cross, but he never got the chance to wear the crown in the NFL. We can only imagine what Dickie would have developed into if he was allowed to focus on one position those great quarterbacks he consistently upstaged went on to become NFL Hall of Famers. In fact, in a brief conversation I had with former Kansas City head coach Hank Stram, Coach Stram said this about Eldridge Dickey. What happened to Eldridge Dickey has to go down in history as one of the greatest sports crimes ever committed. The entire sports world and Eldridge Dickey was robbed by the Oakland Raiders. In 1969, during preseason, he outperformed nearly every quarterback in the AFC and NFC. 
I was not surprised when Kenny Stabler quit. Dickey was special and just too talented. He was fast, had a powerful arm, and he could throw a football with both hands. He was truly one of the most accurate passers I've ever seen. I wanted him badly, but Oakland selected him first. By the time I did get him four years later, Dickey wanted out of the NFL. Deep down, he never forgave the Oakland Raiders. Hank Stram, former head coach of Kansas City Chiefs. Marlon Briscoe, another NFL great, said that Dickey was the greatest quarterback we never saw. It's sad that Dickey's name is not remembered or mentioned when people discuss first great black quarterbacks. Many mention Joe Gilliam, known as Jefferson Street Joe. Ironically, they failed to mention that Dickey mentored Joey, according to Joey, Dickey, and Joe Gilliam Sr. Stay tuned. Coming up, you will see and hear exclusive interviews with Warren Moon, the first black quarterback voted in the NFL Hall of Fame, Vince Young, Joe Gilliam Sr., and Eldridge Dickey himself. Dickey was a proud man, fierce competitor, and peaceful warrior. But above all, he will always be remembered as the Lord's Prayer. Hello, I'm Malik Rashid, your host, and welcome to another segment of the Fight for Life show. Show that's dedicated to education, health, safety, and more importantly, improving the quality of life in the community. We are very fortunate to have with us in the studio today a very distinguished guest. Uh, you all know him. He's none other than Warren Moon, quarterback of the Houston Oilers. Warren, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. 